Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm David Moss and we are on the road again and I'm calling this one a magical road trip. And you will too if you love beautiful kitchens, dream baths, great architecture, all kinds of wonderful things. Going to renovate your home, build a new house. This is the place. I even like the name of the place. It's called Architectural Justice. And why? Because of the wizards behind the curtain. That's right. Darlene Justice and James Justice. I'm with James Justice. And I got to tell you, I love this place when I walked in. I didn't know exactly what it was. What is Architectural Justice? Um, I'd say the best way to describe it is it's a combination of um, many exotic materials that we've imported from all over the world and also we have the shops here on site, a metal shop, granite shop, we have a wood shop and everything's right here. Yeah, you know, you walk in, I see this giant piece of wood, I see beautiful stone, I see marble, I see granite and then somehow, some way, magically, it all comes together into a small room or a kitchen or a bath. Yeah. Yeah, we have designers here on staff that can help in um, any project from custom furniture, kitchens, baths, or full whole house remodels. Yeah. I even like the reclamation side of things. Like I saw out back, there's a giant pile of stumps. Yeah. And like, like, what do you do with a giant pile of stumps or, or a yard full of rocks? Yeah, we call them yard trees. They come from all over the area here. We bring them in and we um, slab them and dry them, turn them into furniture. And then I see, looks like old things, but they're not old, but they, they look old, like pillars and that kind of stuff. So when you when somebody has an idea, they don't quite have the, the solid thing, your imagination goes to work and you can make it real, right? Right, a lot of reproductions and there is a lot of authentic too that mm -hmm. then we can add pieces and modify and make them work for the spaces. Yeah, so we're in Medina, right on the edge of Medina on Pearl Road and I've driven by here a million times and the building's just a bit, little bit back but I tell you folks, when you step inside, it is really something super special. How long have you been working here? Um, 33 years in business. 33 now. years? Yeah. So how has it changed in the 33 years oh, since you lot. started? Tremendously. From one van and, and me to, uh, you know, what we have now, so. What's going to be great about this show too, folks, is we're going to go all around the air. We're going to walk through the, the, you call it the slab yard, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you got a wood shop in the back, the metal shop, they're going to cut some grain up. We're going to see all kinds of great things and we're going to find out why. Architectural Justice is going to be the most magical road trip we've had in a long time. So why don't we get out, get out there and start exploring a little bit. Sounds good. Now, I spent so much time looking around me, I never looked down. And this floor is just an incredible floor. What, what, what is, what's the story on this? Uh, what we did with this is uh, when we remodeled the barn here, we took some of the old barn beams. You can see a piece of it right here. And we took thin slices on our bandsaw, which I can show you later. Uh -huh. And uh, we put them all together and filled everything. And uh, we've made a lot of medallions similar and tabletops this way. See, that's what I like about architectural justice. Like nothing's impossible. You think of it, you imagine it, then you find a way to make it. Right. Yeah, it's great. I don't, I don't think you made the bowls though. Those look like they, they came from somewhere else. Yeah, huh? we imported those. The bowl, of the, the really unique one you see there is actually a petrified wood mm -hmm. log slice that was carved into a bowl. So when you get a bowl like that, do, can you make that into a sink? Like put it in a vanity or something yeah, like that? Yeah, right. That's yeah. what you do with those. Mm -hmm. So you got made out of everything. You got marble, you got right. stone. You, even make, you make stuff out of cement even here, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Wood for cement bowls. Yeah. It's great. Wow, look at this. So this looks like it came from uh, from an ancient place. Yeah, the original one was a limestone carving and we made a mold of it in our cast stone department and we cast those now and make them. Okay, so how do you do that? Is it a rubber mold or how do yeah, you do Yeah, rubber it? mold and we pour them and we've used this for doorways, fireplaces, this one works for a while. You can make a fountain out of those. Yeah, so if you see something you like, like at like, uh, any big old mansion or something, yeah. you can take a picture of it, you can even start with that. Huh? Yeah, or antique places, we buy things that we really like and make molds. Great. Look at this, right? oh, this is another number. Talk about exploring, everywhere you go, there's something great. I was looking down before, now I'm looking up. And this is, well, you could lay out a family room with something like this, huh? Change yeah. it all up. Yeah, we uh, combined metal and wood with this. So you'll see the collar ties are made out of metal. We made the beams out of box beams, out of cedar. Um, so we do a lot of beam work. So if somebody were to come here to visit, how many times do they have to visit to see everything? Um, well, probably half a dozen times. I'm telling you, it's yeah. great. Now here's another kitchen idea. You say you can imagine it, you can make it. I can't even imagine this stone. What is this stone? Um, that's called Tropical Treasure that comes out of Brazil. Um, that has mica in it, that's what's creating those black lines. And then we do the waterfall edge as a real popular edge treatment now. 
And then this kitchen here, what's what's that? Um, we've made the doors here. That is a sub-zero refrigerator freezer. And then we also have the Wolf um, drop-in range. That's terrific. And it looks like the doors slide in the back? Those doors open up this way uh -huh. to open up to a pot filler and all your spices and uh, So you can hide cutlery. the stuff? Yeah, to give a nice clean look. Here's some more crazy floor stuff you got going on here. Yeah, this is sodalite blue that we inlaid into the floor that also comes out of Brazil. Sodalite blue? Yeah, yeah. So you got, how many different kinds of stone do you have here? Oh, there's uh, probably a thousand different stones, probably 3,000 slabs here in mm -hmm. stock. Mostly unique, exotic uh, yeah. slabs. I think when you say unique, everything here is unique. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's just a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. I'm thinking, coming up after the break, you talk about all these different kinds of stone. How many different kinds of stones and slabs do you have? Probably a, th a thousand varieties and probably 3,000 to choose from. You think people would like to visit the slab yard? Oh, yeah. Well, why don't we do that right after the break? Justice in Medina with James Justice, and we're in your favorite place, aren't we? Oh yeah, the granite yard. The granite yard, and I walked out here the first time, and there's so many different colors and textures. And it's just unbelievable. How many different kinds? Uh, we probably have a thousand different kinds of about three thousand slabs total. What are the ones that are real white, real white and plain? Uh, most of the white ones are marble or quartzite. That's very popular now. Huh? Yeah, right. What are some of your favorites? Uh, I like the ones that are natural quartz that the illuminate when you put light behind them. We do a lot of that. Uh huh. There's so many colors. How many different slabs are there? About 3,000. So if somebody comes out here to Architectural Justice and they walk around, how? It must be like going to an ice cream store where you can't oh, figure yeah. out what flavor, right? Yeah, right. A lot of people bring a cabinet door out and walk along and see what works best in their kitchen. Great. Well, here's some up here. Let's go take a look. It's fantastic. I yeah. love those ones too that uh, you put up for the whole wall. You see, you have matching yeah, pieces. Yeah, you can book match them, right? Yeah. yeah. So, this is what you're talking about your favorite, huh? Yeah, this is a marble here. This is probably the most in trend that we have now. People love this stone. Comes out of Italy. So, some were popular for a while and it changes. Yeah. So, you yeah. can come back and you can change your countertops and change your kitchen. Yeah. Right? This one here is pretty timeless. This one's always been a popular yeah. one. Yeah, I love that. This one here is, looks like a piece of jewelry. Yeah. Yeah, this is natural quartz that you see here that will illuminate. And then also then you have this felspar here. This slab here is tagged for um, uh, the Richfield Tavern, the remodel. So this will be the bar and we're going to light it up. It's going to take about four slabs. No four kidding. of these, yeah. So under here you put the lights underneath it and you sparkle like diamonds yeah, in there, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. That is great. I remember the last time I was here, you told me this is one of your favorites right here. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually a quartzite here. This comes out of Brazil also. Um, and you can see the calcite veining in it. Mm -hmm. um, it is just uh, like a painting. You sound like a gold miner or yeah. a, a special metals person yeah. when you look at this stuff, huh? It's become kind of a collection. We get people sending us pictures from all over the world. And, uh, you know, we bring a lot of really unique exotic stone in. How many stones are in the collection? Uh, about 3,000 now. I have a question here. Let's walk up here a little bit. Like, okay, this might not be the right stone for me or for, for the job, but how does somebody come and decide how they're going to have what part and what part of the house? Uh, we have a layout that we schedule with people, and then we um, we tape it out on here. So say you like that part of the slab. Uh -huh. That could be part of your island, or say you would rather have that. We let you lay out where your pieces go. So you so I'd come out here, and I, like if I wanted this vein to go, the length of something, you, you, you could cut it and turn yeah, it for me. Yeah, we cut it that way. Yep. That is fantastic. Yeah. And how about, we're talking about a piece back there that had the big spot in the middle. Like it's Some of these you wouldn't even want to cut up, right? Yeah, right. So yeah. what would you do with those? Those, um, a lot of them are book match, so the slab behind it would be the reverse. But we can cut those and put them together so it creates a, a big pattern for like on a wall, a fireplace, mm -hmm. island, something like that. Or both sides of a backsplash for a, big, for a whole wall, huh? Right, yeah. That's unbelievable. So how many pieces could you get out of this once you tape it up and you get a, a countertop? Could this be a whole kitchen right Yeah, here? this one would be an average size kitchen you could get out of this. But a lot of times we go into that second and third slab. And the nice thing about us bringing full bundles in, we don't charge any extra to go into that second slab. Uh -huh. 
So uh, can you mix and match some of these? Do people ever do anything like oh that? Yeah. Go black and white, yeah. that sort of thing? Or this could be, say, your focal island piece, and then we could do a black perimeter. You know, things like that look really good. Once again, it's that architectural justice imagination thing, right? Yeah. If you can imagine it, you can make it. Right. Okay, so I got it all taped up and ready to go. How do I cut it? Where do you cut it? What do you do? Uh, we take it in um, to our uh, granite shop where we have a uh, robot that cuts it. We laser template in, can the, we see that? in the house. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. go check that out. Well, this is amazing to me. You got all those big pieces out there, and to chop this up, it's like you got an alien in the shop. Yeah. Yeah, the new robot we have there is uh, state of the art. Um, it runs off of digital technology, and then in the house, we use a laser to measure all the countertops. So everything fits like a glove. So when the people are taping it up out there, they're, they're picking the, the piece of the stone, but when you cut it with this, it's gotta be exact. Yeah, huh? it's right on, yeah. 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 So what, what actually cuts it? Is it like a, a, a metal saw or what, what does it? Um, the circular blade cuts all the straight pieces and then we have a water jet that cuts any curve. So it cuts it with a stream of water at about 50,000 PSI. I find it really amazing too. You don't see a bunch of guys standing around running the machine. How does that work? Yeah, he sets up and then he can walk away from the machine. He can be doing other things, laying out templates or, or uh, setting up the next job. Mm -hmm. Some of the stones, when we got a chance to go through the, the yard out there, I noticed they didn't all have that high sheen finish. Can you change the finish on these different slabs? Um, yeah, there's honing you can get. You can do a leathered finish, which is a little bit of a texture, and then also the polish. Mm -hmm. How about Mistakes. Any mistakes? Oh on yeah. <laughs> a lot of broken slabs. So there's a lot of remnants out yeah. there, things like that, that are real good values. And so we're looking around at different kinds of stones. Are some easier to cut? Are some easier to manage than others? Oh yeah. What's the difference between the stones? Uh, the marbles are really easy to cut. Um, some of these newer quartzites that we're getting in, we even had to buy special blades. It is so hard to cut. We got to slow the speed way down. Uh, unbelievably how, how hard it is. I saw some of the stones too, like some of the really glamorous, sparkly kind of stones have like a, a fiberglass net on them. What's that about? Yeah, the netting means that it's an unstable material, uh, so that helps hold it together to get it installed. So, I see all the big slabs. Do people ever take these slabs and make them into little pieces and do different things like that with them? Yeah, like, yeah, we them? make a lot of uh, cheese trays, cutting boards, things like that. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so if, I just, if I came out here to walk around the place, just look around, I wanted a cheese Board. Mm -hmm. Did I get one before I left? I mean, you oh. work it out for me? Yeah, yeah, we can get one. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> we have some in stock, actually. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. good. So, what did you do before you had this machine? How did you handle that? Um, we used to make wood templates and then we would uh, put them on the slab and cut to the template. So, this has made it so much more accurate and uh, just a better job. So, how many guys, how many guys does it take to run this, this shop? Um, we have about seven people that have the total granite area. I saw. So when the guys pick it up, like we got to see that one piece that you could see through, you pick it up with it. So how do you handle this stuff? You don't, I don't see you guys carrying it around. Oh, uh, we have a vacuum lifter over there that clamps to it with vacuum, and uh, they can pick the entire slab up with that. And when you're talking to somebody with the machine running, and the machine stops, you find yourself hollering at the person you're talking to. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. got beautifully quiet yeah. in here. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a real loud noise, but it can get to you after a while. Right. But it is a powerful one. And then there's sure. a camera up top that shows a picture of exactly what's being cut there. Yeah. Um, so where, where does that picture, where the camera go to? The back to the computer? Yeah, back to the computer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. A lot of fantastic stuff at Architectural Justice. Unbelievable. You wanna see some more? Let's do some more. We'll do some more right after the break. Thank you. Okay. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's our road trip to Architectural Justice on Pearl Road in Medina, and it's a fabulous place for all kinds of things, including furniture. And you get the wildest collection of furniture here. Where, where do you get it? Um, a lot of it we make, a lot of it we um, bring in also. I, I like to see over here, it looks like it's something you found in a boneyard. It's sort of like a, what, what is that? 
Um, yeah, that's a root from the Philippines that we uh, we imported that. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you, how do you find this stuff like from the Philippines and from Italy and all over uh, the world? We have a lot of contacts now in a lot of different countries, and they send me pictures of things. Yeah. So then we just uh, make the order. I was sort of fond of the uh, cigar cabinet I saw around the corner. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of folks smoking cigars, but it might make you start smoking cigars. <laughs> the cabinet's so nice, huh? Yeah. Where do you get something like that? Uh, we built that. We actually built that in our shop, and that utilized our metal shop and our um, wood shop. So some more investigation, some more travel for us to check out these things. Yeah. How about that that wine room? It looks like a little cave in there. What, what is, how do you put that together? Yeah, the wine room, we have some of our cast stone in there that we made the door surround out of. And then also we have the gear table in there and we have some wall mounted wine racking that we made in our metal shop. So I'm starting to get the idea when you come to Architectural Justice, if you don't see what you want, you sort of talk about what you want, then you figure out a way to make it. Oh yeah, yeah, we have designers can sit down, we can draw anything up and really almost anything that yeah. we can build here. Yeah, so I don't want it in wood, I want it in metal. What do you do? You make it in metal. Yeah. How about these crazy cabinets? This looks, uh, this is sort of unique looking. How do these work? Um, this, everybody likes the sliding, um, doors and then also the uh, floating shelves so yeah oh look at that so this gives you an opportunity to cover a few things up so not not everything's in the open and then these just lift right off and then we have the bearings we put in there and the white oak top wow so you could do it all the way around a whole room like this if you want yeah you can now we can make this out of different materials we can make this out of stainless we can make it out of brass we can make this a little more modern or mm -hmm. not I like this too. This is a like a, almost like a farmer sink, huh? Farmer yeah. Sink? Yep. We mitered the granite here to make it look like a farm sink, so we actually used the mat. It looks like it's all one piece, but it's really a couple pieces, huh? Right. Yep. Yeah. You can wash a baby in there. <laughs> Put the dog in there. Get yeah. the dog a shampoo. I like this too. This is a, a heck of a table. Well, look at this bench down here. This is really something. So, what's the deal on this? That's a leather bench we imported. It goes real well with a lot of our live live edge um, tables. Can I say the price out loud? Eight hundred and eight dollars. I mean, that's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, real good. That's a great price. Mm -hmm. And then I look at this table. This is really something. This looks like it made. You might have got this from uh, Zorro's Hacienda. Yeah, actually we built everything here. This, we used um, two white oak slabs. It looks like one, and we found a really unique tree that had the ingrown bark. And so these are book match slabs that we put together, and then we uh, water jet the uh, metal to, ma you know, to make the splice and that. Well, so, so how do you go about to, to make a table like this? I mean, wh wh where'd you get the idea for this first? Um, we try to think of unique ways to put a table together. Uh -huh. And again, we always are trying to put the metal and granite and things like that into a table. So we've done also granite inlays, uh -huh. you know, for that. And, and then, then you have this wood, what kind of wood is this? This is white oak. And then also these are a good way to tie things together. We haven't attached them yet, but oh, and we can do any, so, any so design. So it won't split anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you actually made this table? Yeah, we made it here. So what, does, what, what, what did it look like when it came in before it looked like it's this? It's a tree. It's a big tree? Yeah, a big ugly stump that came from somebody's yard. Well, I got an idea. Why don't we go out and check out the big ugly stump and find out how you did it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do it. James, big and ugly doesn't even begin to describe this stump here, but it could become something beautiful, huh? Oh yeah, this is one of the biggest logs we've had. It's a soft maple. It came out of Olmstead Falls and uh, we'll probably cut this all into tabletops. Okay, so how many tables might you make out of something like this? Um, we could probably get 10 or, or 12 tables out of this. Yeah. And you got, it's a big saw you use to cut these babies down, right? Oh yeah, it'll cut 67 inch. And we're always looking for big logs. So that's, that's a plea out to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Bring us your yeah. logs. Yeah. Bring us your tired trees. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what you do. You cut this into slabs and what's the next step for it? Uh, then we dry it in our kiln. Uh, we have the newest technology of drying. It's a, it's a vacuum kiln. So we can dry our very thick lumber in about three weeks time. So it's pretty fast. That's fast. So what happens when it goes in the kiln then? Does it stretch or shrink or? It shrinks. Uh, so the vacuum turns on, the temperature comes up and it pulls, extracts all the water out of the wood. Uh -huh. We take it down to about 6%. Okay, like that beautiful table we saw inside, it had that big crack in it and you had to put uh, 
little braces in it. You made them decorative, little yeah. little braces in it. Does that help? You need that for all the tables you make like that, or they're uh, all? Not all of them, but a lot of these big old yard trees have uh, rod in them. Uh -huh. So a lot of times that'll give us openings and things like that that we need to patch and, and inlay things. Okay, you call it a yard tree. What's the difference between a yard tree and what other kind of tree? Uh, a yard tree comes out of uh, like more of an urban area. Most sawmills don't want to touch them because they're full of metal. Um, we get them because they're usually the very unique shapes and large, and we can yeah. get some of the best looking lumber. Yeah, you know, you, you don't think about that, but people probably pound nails in them for yeah. put signs or their dress thing, and sometimes yeah. the tree just eats all that stuff. You yeah, can't even we see find it. Uh, barbed wire <laughs> fence, we have horseshoes, chain, <laughs> cables, nails everywhere. Yeah. So we go through a lot of blades. You go through a lot of saws. That's worth it, though. Yeah, yeah. Cut the saw, so then we got to dry it. What's the next step from there? Uh, we take it to our planer and we plane it down uh, and that's when you really see the beauty of the wood come out and then we take it to our cabinet shop and, and make it into a table. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about when you plane it and you determine what you're going to do with it. Like how many how many things could happen in that process right there deciding what to do with it? What do you look for and, you know, and what do you discover? Um, a lot of it we plane and we almost put it into stock as our granite slabs. So a customer can come in they can actually just buy the slabs or they can say, oh yeah, I want my table made out of that one. So uh -huh. they'll go into stock and they can choose the, the wood based on the species of the grain character. So you said something very interesting to me. Like when I was walking mm -hmm. around the store, I saw all these beautiful slab tables, totally finished, and you've got a base and all that. But people can come here and just buy the slab itself? Yeah. And that'd yeah. be raw, like no stain on it, no nothing? Yeah, or if they want us to just put a finish on it, we can do that. We can uh -huh. take it to any step or sell it to them raw. Yeah, so, so uh, these slab tables are so popular now. What are some of the options like for a base and legs and that sort of thing? Um, cast iron bases, we can uh, make wood bases, and then now a lot too, we're putting granite inlays in the tops, metal inlays, things like that, just to make them a little different than the standard yeah. live edge table. I like some of those too. I mean, you can actually leave the bark on some of them on the edge. Huh? Yeah, right, the live edge, yeah. 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 That's very popular right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, so you mentioned about taking some of this to your cabinet shop. We haven't been there yet, have we? No, not yet. Okay, well, let's head to the cabinet shop. Check right. it out. Well, check this out. So, this is in the shop here, the cabinet shop. What are you making? Um, this is again for the Richfield Tavern. We're recreating some of her windows. This is called Lincrusta. It's a, it's a material that we buy that has the uh, carvings in it. So it's hard to believe, standing around all those big old trees out there and checking all that out, that a lot of that wood ends up here in, the, in this shop. Right. Like what's, what's gonna happen with this? Um, these will get turned into small candle holders or cheese trays that we'll sell in our cafe gallery. I've seen those, they're really yeah, nice. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and you can buy them, how about yeah. that? I really like those. This is really, you know, I've been through the whole thing, architectural justice, but this is really where the Santa's elves sort of work yeah, here, right? Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, yeah. these are the guys that really have the big time skills yeah. you don't find anymore. No, there's some really good cabinet makers. Really, yeah. good, really artisan time mm -hmm. stuff. So this saw he, he's got over here, I guess this cut, this is per, they didn't have this in Amish country. No. So what's he making it's over here? It's an automated saw, the beam goes down, blade comes up, and just cuts perfect uh, size material. So we talked a lot before about some of the, uh, lines you have, you can order them, but these are this is the custom stuff. Here, custom, huh? you know, the dovetail drawers here. I gotta tell you, folks, too, when you pick this thing up, it is substantial, but look how beautiful it is. I mean, it's yeah, we use solid maple on our drawers. The piece of furniture that that is. I saw a fellow back there making a Queen Anne's leg. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. amazing. Now, this is one of those trees that were out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one's white oak. So this is going to be floating shelves here, is what we're doing there. Uh-huh. So here's some of that rot and imperfection yeah. you're talking about. And we fill people, that. People love that. We fill it with a black fill and it just looks beautiful. It turns into artwork, it really does. You know what sort of beautiful way it smells in here? All yeah. This, all this wood yeah. and sawdust Yeah, a lot of people here? say that. Yeah. Well, add me to the list because I think it's, it's pretty special. So this is the beginning of something here too. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, these are tables here that we're making. There's three of them we're making. And then this is uh, actually a hand cut dovetail here where they hand cut it with a saw. So very unique. You don't see that at all anymore. No. And we also use a quilted maple. Sometimes when we cut the logs, we'll cut it open and we'll find that we do have a quilted maple log. So we have a really large supply of it. 
Boy, that is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. piece of wood. And, and, and if you have a piece at home that you want to mimic for some reason or another, you could bring that piece here and Architectural Justice will make that piece for you. Right, right. Yeah. This is sort of weird out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. This is an antique newel I found at an um, auction. So we're going to make a rubber mold and then we're going to pour this in cast stone so we can use it for outdoor wrought iron posts yeah. or we can even put it in a staircase and make the newel out of it. I got some of these at home outside and this part's all rotted off and not good. So instead of having the carpenter come, maybe I should yeah. see you guys yeah. do that. I want to show them one more, one last thing too. We've got a little tabletop over here. This is this is one of those big, nasty, stinky pieces yeah. of wood out there, huh? Yeah, this one's walnut here. And what I really like too, you told me, is that you can finish this, you can put it on a base, but if someone wanted to buy just this piece and try and get it in their car and take it home, they can make it they a project it, yeah. too, huh? Yep, and then there's a picture of the piece of furniture this is going to be right there. It's uh, fantastic. Well, I got to tell you something. One thing you can't take home with you, though, are these guys <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> make all this stuff here. So it's yeah. fantastic. Well, thank you very much for this trip to the cabinet shop. And uh, guess what? We're going to have some more right after the break. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's our road trip to architectural justice in Medina, and we are in one of my favorite places, the kitchen. James, we're talking about kitchens. How about kitchen jewelry? What's kitchen jewelry? Um, it's a line we've came up with utilizing metal, wood, granite that you can add on to existing cabinetry. So I already have a kitchen, and I come to you and I say, I'd like to spiff up the joint a bit. And you have some good ideas for me, like, okay, I got a table like this. How, how would I spiff this thing up? We can uh, create this piece here that we dovetailed into the granite and add an end panel to the existing cabinetry. So you've got this big table here, and then just putting this stuff on the end of it gives it a whole, a whole new look. Then. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. I like this idea down here where you pull out the drawer. So this is part of the, the whole concept too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. now I see so many great things here, and I see the cabinets that you do and the custom woodwork, but I also see you have a line of cabinetry that you bring in from other manufacturers also. Yeah, we have cabinetry all price points. We have people that flip houses, so we have a lower... Uh, basic line all the way up to our custom that we make here on site. Mm -hmm. So like when you get that those other lines like say you're, you are flipping houses or you're remodeling a house uh, you can hook them, hook them up with the granite and all that also? Yeah yeah we also have granite that's great for flipping houses. Mm -hmm. I saw some nice ideas too like this shelf behind me I mean you could have a, have a wall there you could change the wall by putting up a big piece of what, what, what kind of stone yeah. is that? Yeah that's um, honed mist granite uh, we do a lot of refaces so a lot of times we'll take the cabinets off the wall and we'll replace them with the, these to give the uh, whole new look. Yeah. Do the full backsplash and the zinc hood. Hey, so I see the Wolf here. What other kind of appliances do you guys have? Um, we carry the full Wolf Sub-Zero line. So mm -hmm. we've kind of decided to stay with that one line. Yeah, I like that idea. These lamps are pretty unique too, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, we uh, bring those in. We have lights all over the showroom, very unique. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing about coming to Architectural Justice, you can get really confused because you see one thing you like, then you walk another two steps and you see two things you like, then three things you like, and then God help you if you go in that room with all the hardware in there because that is like, a, that's a trophy room yeah, of hardware, isn't yeah. it? Tell me yeah. a little bit about that stuff. Yeah, it's castings we bring in from all over the world, a lot of very unique castings, and we utilize a lot of those into our pieces. Mm -hmm. So a lot of tiny little things that you can do, like if you come in here, like I see stone pillars, but they're created. I saw something when I came in, talk about jewelry. Uh, uh, it looked like a piece of an old building, but it, it's, it wasn't an old building, was it? Yeah, no, it's a conservatory. So it's a, a remanufacture, it's a reproduction, but they did a great job. It looks like it came from an old castle. That's a big piece of jewelry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if somebody's gonna come in and they, they have a really nice kitchen already, what are some ideas you could give them to just to change it up a little bit? Um, a lot of times we'll remake the island, um, take the island out, give them a piece of furniture there, mm -hmm. then also on the wall cabinets we can make changes, do floating shelves, just do some of the more modern things to make just to update the kitchen. So you're not tearing the whole place apart? We you don't get, have to. You right? got the plumbing stays where it is, maybe just replace the range or the refrigerator or something like that. Right. And when you take the cabinets out it changes everything because you're not like constricted or restricted to, to what you do in the room then. Right, yeah it gives you a little more budget to to uh, do some more unique things. Okay, well say I want something done in metal and you don't have it here but you have it in your head, what do you do then? 
Yeah. Our designers here, we have eight designers here. We can draw it up, and I give a quote on it, and uh, put it into production. So I get an idea. Why don't we go out to the metal shop and see how it's done? Sounds good. Well, James, are I going to find any uh, kitchen jewelry here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of this we use to uh, weld onto pieces to create the, the cabinet accent pieces. Okay, so this thing here, this is a heavy little rascal. What, what's this for? Um, this we're actually uh, in the process of making a uh, the window frames for the Richfield Tavern. And oh. We're going to be using these. Oh, that's great! And yeah. I notice on the back you got some you got some welding going on here. Yeah, yeah. This was for a sample to show some people. Yeah, it's sort of tough to weld on the cast iron too. It is. So you got to yeah. do some tricky stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. I, I see some ancient tools here. The big uh, machine behind me. This. Uh, Cutter, right? Yeah, that's one of my favorite machines. That's an old press, over 100 years old. That gets you excited. Uh, shear. Oh yeah, yeah, really good. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. So what do you use that for? Uh, cutting sheet metal. Cutting metal. So. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. This thing here is, is sort of bowed. How did this thing get like this? Uh, What's that this for? set of rollers here. Again, an old machine that we have, and um, you just get used. You can set the rollers and crank it through, and, uh -huh. and get any any kind of radius that you'd like with it. See, I mean, you make this stuff. Yeah. That's that's crazy And then cool. some pieces like this we're using for furniture legs. Uh, we'll be cutting that off, and this will be the bottom of a foot for a piece of furniture. Then we can make that bronze, brass, copper, anything we so want. So where do you get the ideas for this? I mean, how does, how does this, what's the beginning of this? Oh, uh, there's like eight designers here. All of us are just dreaming different things up. And once we start bringing these pieces into our showroom, which we have in our uh, metal mm -hmm. room, you look at pieces and see, oh wow, you know, that'll work good for a leg or something like that. Mm -hmm. How about that big squirrely stuff in front of the table? Yeah, that's going to be a granite table. So that two of those together will be a leg for a table, uh -huh. table base. So the person buying it, who is that person and, and how did they end up with that table? Um, a customer came in, wanted a custom table, fell in love with a piece of granite. So asked us if we could design a base. We gave her a few different ideas, uh -huh. and that's what she liked. So what kind of alternatives would, would she have like to um, that? There's some other bases like that we could use this kind of thing with legs. We can do a wooden base. Mm -hmm. We could do an all marble, all granite base. If you so, can imagine it, you can make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's great. And, and this is from Gilligan's boat, right? The one that <laughs> the, the crash at sea. Yeah, an old press. Again, just love the old tools. Yeah. Old yeah okay, so you get this old tool here. Is there going to be a use for this in some of the stuff that you make, or do you get stuff sometimes just because you love it, or is this going Both. to be an ornament somewhere? Both. Hopefully, you know, we'll, you know, some of the things we'll use. Other times we, uh, you know, there's ones we use every day. Uh huh. So. This, this is the persuader. <laughs> this hammer looks a little weird. Why does it look like that? Whoever was using that right there was hitting that same angled piece with that all the time. that's really soft metal, huh? Yeah, brass, that is, yeah. yeah. What do you use a brass hammer for? Um, when we're hitting metal that we don't want to damage the metal. Yeah, so, so the, the hammer takes the beating, but the metal still moves a right, little bit. Right, yep. Great. Love it. Let's keep the party rolling. So, James, this is where the magician pulls the cloak off the trick and shows you how to do it, right? Right. Okay, so I remember when we were inside, we saw all that beautiful work around that doorway mm -hmm. that was all from an old location. Yeah, yeah. So, so how does this work? Yeah, this shows right here. We poured this, um, demolding it. So this is a thing this like, here. so before it was this, it was just this little thing Yeah, this concrete. This originally was a cast iron um, antique that we found that we made this rubber mold of. So then we pour these, and then we can put any finish on it. We can put the bronze, we can do copper, we can do pewter. Okay, so we got this little thing. What, what would somebody do with this? Um, this would be an applique and a backsplash maybe, or on a range hood or something like that. Uh -huh. Or you can put them in repetition somewhere? Yeah, on a wall, you can do it. What's going on? You poured this one too the other day? Yeah, yeah, this one here. So how many guys do you have working in here doing this? Um, the cast stone is one person. Lion's head that we did. So again, we can do that in bronze, black, or uh, copper. So he hasn't dried out all the way. Uh huh. Yeah, lion's got a wet nose. That. Yeah. Hey, this thing behind us here with a little piece of uh, 
stone on it. What's what's going on with this? It um, looks like it's from a Greek temple. Yeah, this we're gonna make a mold of. This is actually uh, plastic, and we're gonna make a mold of it. So when you so then to, we can recreate it. So if you make a mold of that, would it be like four molds that you put together, or two molds, or just one big mold? One mold that's split, and then you would peel it off of this. Uh huh. So because this rubber is pretty flexible, when you pull this out, you can see how it. Oh it yeah. Goes. Well, you got this great. Big, whoa, that's heavy. So you got this big one here. What's that? Yeah, that's the queen. We have also a king and a jack, so we can pour those, make them bronze. What we had in mind for those was like a wainscot in a entertainment room, uh -huh. like a rec room, something right. like that. I saw when your guys get this off the shelf, so we could show the audience. Yeah. And this guy carried it around like it weighed peanuts. Yeah, here's guy, another one. Guy looked like Charles Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> I think it weighs what, 50 pounds. Yeah. There's another one. It'd be a backsplash ornamentation. And again, we usually we would make it an oil rub bronze, something uh -huh. like that. So you could make you could make it any finish you want. You can yeah. make it look like gold or silver or whatever, huh? Right. So what would somebody use something like this for? Now this one, our cabinet shop made this original mold. So we use a real piece of hammered copper and then two rope moldings. <clears throat> and we actually did a range hood with this that we made this copper. And then also we have the one over there. Let me grab this. Because I think, if I remember correctly, this is an interesting story. Yeah. So look at this. What do you think? How did Architectural Justice do this and made it from what? We made it from a lady's belt, the chrome belt that you see. Yeah. Yeah. This crazy belt. Yeah. So, so how did you get that crazy idea? Um, we just are always looking at pieces and th different things. If we see something and think it would make a neat mold, then, then we go ahead and uh, make a rubber cast. So, it, it. so it's just a, a lady's belt? made a, one of these out of it, you yeah. pour the concrete in and that's it. Yeah, now we can use it a liner and a backsplash or a bathroom So do you keep, tile. you keep a pencil and a notepad next to your bed so when you wake up in the middle of the night with a crazy idea you just go... Actually my wife and I do, yeah. <laughs> you do yeah, that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the last crazy idea you've had that's coming into uh, existence? Well, different ones, we don't even want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to keep going places yeah. here at Architectural Justice because yeah. we're going to have some more fun here. Let's, let's keep it going after the break. Yeah. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. We are at Architectural Justice in Medina. We've seen all these beautiful things, James. Great, wonderful stuff. Now I wonder, how can you corral it all and put it into a place, into a livable working area? Uh, well, we have uh, eight designers on staff and uh, we try to pair a customer with a designer. And then, you know, the designers really try to include the customer, learn about their lifestyle, learn, how, you know, everything they do so that we can try to put a design together for them. And then we use the 3D um, computer-aided design to really show them their materials in place. And it just kind of opens up the whole area and I think it's a really beautiful focal point of the, um, of the kitchen. So do people look around and see stuff they like or they have an idea a room or, or can you actually go to their house and change the shape of a room also? Oh yeah, yeah. Anything interior we can move walls, take out walls and um, give them the drawing that shows them what that's going to look like before we do it. Okay, so so your, your wife is among the people that help people do this sort of thing. So is it a different mindset to be able to do that kind of stuff? I mean, if, to me, I walk into my room, it's the same room forever. I just put different pictures up or something. Yeah. How, how do you start? Yeah, the, the nice thing is, is they've really gotten good at uh, finding the, what the customer's design mm -hmm. is and really putting uh, materials together for that. Have you had customers come in before and then they, they don't like their house anymore, but they don't know if they really want to move anymore and you can change the identity of a house so much that it's like getting a new house? Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of people love their neighbors, they love their yard and uh, you know, after that if they want to stay there, we, uh -huh. you know, we can design anything they would like. And one of the things that really struck me earlier in our conversation was that you've got a price point for all different customers. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we talk, we talk about you can, you can make the most exotic thing in the world, but also you have some very standardized items that you can make look very special. Yeah, we can take stock cabinets and add some of our metal accents or, you know, different things like that or some of our castings and create a, you know, more 
uh, unique looking kitchen with some mm -hmm. very simple changes. Yeah, because you got the cabinet lines that you buy, you got the cabinets you can make. So I mean, you could you put the combination of those things together, there's something for everyone. Right. And then as far as finishes are concerned, I mean, we could really go in any direction. But I imagine there's certain times uh, that people want to be trendy or they want to go with the times right now. So, so what do we do for them? Yeah, we pride ourselves here at really staying on the cutting edge of the trends and um, really um, bringing those materials here so you can see those here and see all different aspects of your project here so you can pick everything out. Let's go take a look. All right. James, it's my chance to be trendy here. So I come out here and I, I see a cabinet door, I see some tile, I see some whatever that stone is over there. Now, tell me the trendy thing about this. Um, this right here is Sherwin-Williams um, Color of the Year Naval, and then the um, Brush Brass is by far popular, most popular finish that we're seeing Okay, now. hold on one second here. You said the color is Naval, right? Naval, it's called, yeah. So how much different is this than the last big trend? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, they do change quite a bit, yeah. um, the colors of the year. It's, it's uh, interesting seeing which ones they pick, which yeah. looks like you have the right jacket. I'm wearing the right <laughs> jacket today. That's good. I'm feeling very trendy today. And you, and you were talking about the hardware. You know, hardware is something like, I know you have a room of hardware in there that is just unbelievable, all yeah. different kinds of hardware. So you could spiff up your place just by redoing the hardware, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so what's the hardware happening now and what used to be um, Brush brass is the most popular, and you can just measure the centers of your screws when you're opening your door to see what size you need. Uh -huh. And then and you come in and we can uh, order up the, the hardware. So your wife, Darlene, is she the one that sort of, sort of helps drive people to understand what's trending and what's not? She does. Also, there's a lot of designers in there that, um, you know, will put these big pallets together. It's a good way to do it. You can see the slab. We usually try to start with the slab as the first piece of the design. Mm -hmm. Somebody falls in love with the material and it's a lot easier to then pull in the rest of the materials right. to go with it. What makes these two last pieces work with this slab for you in your mind's eye? Um, usually you would only want to pick a couple of things that have a lot going on where the tile is a busy, your busy piece yeah. and then the granite is not too busy that's in the in the middle so then you would pick a floor that is one color and you'd keep a, pick a cabinet that's one color. Yeah. So you're sort of framing it with that with the heavy gray. Yeah. And giving it a little excitement with the, uh, that'd be a, a backsplash maybe? Yeah, backsplash. Like where this is a rectified floor tile. Uh -huh. We like using a rectified. It's perfectly cut so we can get very tight joints on that. Okay, terrific. And we know navel, or navel blue, is that what it's called? Navel, yeah. Sherwin okay. Williams. We know what we're doing here. <laughs> so you, look at that. Architectural justice can help you with your styling and your trending. <laughs> we'll do some more after the break, huh? All right. Okay, let's do it. James, this is something that happens for every show we do. It's the end. So I was wondering, what was your experience like doing the New Day Cleveland? It was a lot of fun taking you guys around, showing you everything. Yeah, and you know, it was like that the first time I came here, too. I came as a tourist, not looking for a project, and now I'm a devotee. That means I like the place a lot. Good. Yeah, so fantastic spot. Come up here, check it out, get some good ideas, and uh, you might be able to dress up a room or uh, redo a room or redo a house. Might even make you want to buy another house and have Architectural Justice hook it up. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I want to thank Darlene, too. Oh, yeah. She's the real boss, right? Yeah, right. No, there's no doubt about that. I'm David Moss, by the way, and I'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland. So long.